Our next organelles are the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are large oval shaped or egg shaped structures found in cells of leaves and green parts of the stem in plants. Each chloroplast is surrounded by two membranes so that gives it a double membrane and like many of the other organelles the chloroplast has a double membrane. Within the membrane there is a gel-like that is thick material is a gel-like stroma through which runs a system of internal membranes known as lamellae. Lamella is singular when there are many they are referred to as lamellae. So within the stroma that is gel-like semi-fluid it is there are numerous lamellae that run along the length of the chloroplast. At some points the lamellae are stacked together like here and here. They are stacked together to form grana. Singular is granum. So this one stack this one stack of lamellae is known as a granum. Within the entire chloroplast organelle, we have many grana. So the plural of granum is grana. The grana contain the green pigment chlorophyll. Now chlorophyll is a molecule. It is a green pigment. A pigment is a colored body. So within the grana, there are many chlorophyll molecules. Now, chlorophyll should not be confused with the chloroplast. Chloroplast is the organelle. Chlorophyll are the green particles that are found within the organelle. The function of the chlorophyll molecules is to trap light energy that is used during photosynthesis. Now the products of photosynthesis are stored within the starch granule. So the main product of photosynthesis is glucose. Glucose is built up to form starch granules. That's why within the chloroplast there will be many starch granules as a result of photosynthesis. Also within the chloroplast there are ribosomes. The function of the ribosomes remember ribosomes provide the site for protein synthesis so these ribosomes in the chloroplast provide the site for the synthesis of enzymes that are used in the process of photosynthesis. So in general, the main function, in fact, the only function of the chloroplast is the manufacture of food through the process of photosynthesis. Next organelle is a vacuole. Now, there are many different types of vacuoles, but in general, all the vacuoles have a single membrane. It is regardless of the type, they all have a single membrane. There are three types of vacuoles depending on the function. The three types are one, subvacuole. Subvacuole is usually large and centrally placed and is surrounded by a membrane known as the tonoplast. Subvacuoles 
occur in plant and animal cells only that in animal cells the vacuoles are very small and temporary but in plant cells they are large and they occupy the central position of most of the plant cells the fluid enclosed within the subvacuole is known as the cell sub it contains water dissolved salts sugars and some waste materials functions of the subvacuole one it contributes to the osmotic pressure of the cell now the osmotic pressure is, is the tendency of a solution to draw in water from the surrounding now the stored salts and sugars in the cell sap contribute to the osmotic properties of the cell so the higher the concentration of the salts and the sugars the higher the osmotic pressure that will be generated by the subvacuole and the more the water that will be drawn into the cell from the surroundings now as more and more water get into the cells the vacuole the subvacuole will expand outward pushing the cytoplasm against the cell membrane and the cell wall now this outward pressure as a result of the absorption of water is what makes the cells turgid so by contributing to the osmotic properties of the cell and enabling the cell to absorb water thereby become turgid subvacuole plays a very important role in offering support to the cell and the entire plant the second function of the subvacuole is storage of substances such as water the sugars and salts remember this water has so many other roles in the plant and one of the area where the water is stored until it is required for some uses is the subvacuole sugars are also stored there and the salts and they'll be absorbed back into the cytoplasm when the need arises now the second type of vacuole is the food vacuole also known as the digestive vacuole these are found in some unicellular organisms such as amoeba and their function is to digest the ingested food particles the third one is a contractile vacuole contractile vacuole is a specialized type of vacuole that is capable of contracting to expel unwanted substances from the cell it is found in some unicellular organisms such as amoeba and paramecium where it is used to remove excess water and waste products you see here in this illustration this is an, an amoeba cell food particle is ingested into the cell forming a food vacuole the enzymes are released into the food vacuole digest the food materials and the products of digestion are absorbed into the surrounding cytoplasm that is how an amoeba feeds by ingesting food particle forming food vacuole out of it and then digesting the food within the vacuole the products are absorbed into the surrounding on the other hand contractile vacuoles form within the cell unwanted material waste substances or excess water 
are pumped into the contractor vacuum. So as more and more unwanted substances are pumped into the contractor vacuum, it enlarges and also at the same time moves towards the cell membrane where it would fuse with it and empty its contents of unwanted substances to the surroundings. In that way, contractor vacuum is used for excretion. That is removal of either unwanted substances, substances that are in excess or the waste products from metabolic reactions.